Campus Party is the biggest technology festival in the world in the areas of technology, science, innovation and creativity. We are here together living 24 hours 7 during a whole week. We have more than 2,000 people sleeping here uh, in tents. It's amazing because it, no other technology festival has a place to stay during the night. So there are activities going on during the night, during the day. There's no time to rest, almost. <laughs> First of all, this is campus, but at the same time, it's party. So they are sharing everything they have, their skills, their knowledge. They, but at the same time, they are enjoying staying here. They are meeting their friends they met through the web, but they are meeting here live. It's like uh, being together for most of them for the first time in, in their lives in a great place, for a, in a great weekend, in a great city. There's 10,000 people behind us, all with ideas, all making connections, all thinking about the power of digital technology to make things better, make things different, create, invent, develop. Uh, and that's what Telefonic is about. You know, that's what we're uh, focusing all of our energy on. Uh, and it's about the idea of uh, the power of ideas, the power of technology, the power of digital uh, to make things better, connect people up, create new services. And so, it's a very, very synergistic kind of relationship, and uh, we're thrilled to see the size and scale and just the mind-blowing number of ideas on, on show. When we are talking about computing, uh, the source code is the main base, the legal framework. Without it, there's nothing else. Then, let's talk about Europe. What do we need in Europe? If we want our institutions, our countries, our cities to work, we need laws, we need tradition, we need ways of doing things. But we have seen in the last years that Europe is going through a really complicated moment. And we know that Europe is a great place to live. And we want to make it better. We want to change things because the last, the, the, the old ways didn't work. We want to make a new way of doing things. That's why we're here, retyping European source code. Campus party rocks. And it's very gratifying for me because I've been writing about this kind of thing and how it was going to evolve and happen. And to see it occur is is wonderful. Well, something like Campus Party is the tip of the iceberg of an extraordinary phenomenon, which is people self-organizing, using the internet to create all kinds of new value, and in this case, private value for entrepreneurs and public value that can be of great benefit to society. Uh, if I were uh, running the EU right now, I'd get all over this and invest significantly in the movement like this. There should be campus parties in every city in Europe and extending out all across Europe as, a, as the embryo of a whole new transformation of, of the various national state economies in Europe and Europe itself. Well, it is fascinating and it is for me inspiration and motivation. The future of Europe is digitized and that we have to take into account that it's not anymore how we uh, tackle problems uh, like we did yesterday, but that we have to involve all those new technologies. The single market, uh, the combination of all the efforts and the uh, challenges of a digital technology that is just started in the development, uh, putting those together with those talents that are just visiting the campus party, well, it, this is a, a win situation. Hackers are really smart, and if you're really smart, you're going to look at a world and see the problems that are in it and want to do something about them. Technologists generally, they're very concrete, you know, they want to solve, they want to hack a problem right now. And often what happens in one way or another is that great solutions get hacked that no one ever uses. So to, to actually, because they don't make their way into the, the uh, context of relevant social action, which is still very much the domain, but not the exclusive domain of NGOs. NGOs are often intimidated by technology. They don't know how to relate to hackers. They, it, there, there's, a, there's a difference in culture that often can be a, a significant block. So what we're, what we're trying to do in, in concert with Random Hacks of Kindness and 
with Campus Party to some extent, is to figure out how to overcome that cultural difference so that these incredible hacks actually get used. Bespoke solutions to social problems are not, um, they're not easy to market. You know, no one is out there clamoring for a, you know, complex hack that might illuminate the deficiencies in the food chain. That's, that's not marketable. So big companies are not going to make that product. Uh, a hacker might make a product that only five organizations in the world can use, so it's not a, a marketplace proposition, but those five organizations could change the world. The experience of being around so many people buzzing so many ideas at once is absolutely extraordinary. And I think the developer community, there used to be a, a kind of maybe a distinction between the, the developer community and the operators because one was kind of providing the infrastructure and one was, was not, but I think all that's changed. You know, we, we are very much a digital services company now. Uh, we're very much about platforms. We're very much about open access and open standards. Uh, the stuff we're doing on HTML5 now to kind of create platforms for, for, for apps and digital innovation in an open environment. So I think we're actually very, very well aligned. Free software means the users have four freedoms. The freedom to use the software for any purpose. The freedom to share software, to share copies of the software with anyone they, they want. Uh, the freedom to study the program and see how it works so they can modify it and adapt it to their needs. And the freedom to improve the software, which means they, they can publish the modifications. If you don't have free software, then you cannot control your computer and you're not in control of your data. So if you're not in control of your computer, then who else is? And the thing is, well, the software editors are in control of how the computer is going to work, how the data is going to be recorded and formatted, and how that means also your personal information and what you do in your daily job. And we think you know, people should be in control of, of their lives. I think what we're seeing right now is an absolute sea change where more and more internet users are willing to speak up about their online rights and understand what's at stake. With personal privacy, the biggest concern is that people don't even realize that it's under attack. Uh, so often our privacy is being invaded uh, because data is being collected on us or shared in ways that we would have a problem with and we don't even understand that it's happening. So I think the first battle in the uh, personal privacy space is simply to make users aware of what is actually happening with their personal information and then uh, make companies and governments be much more transparent about what they're doing with that information. Now sure we all share more information than we used to in the past but, um, and we get real benefits for doing that, but privacy is still a basic human right and it's worth defending. And there are all kinds of reasons to not live your life out loud and to not join the personal openness movement as I've called it. We are still in the age of the open internet. There are definitely threats on the horizon, but we still have the ability to connect and communicate and express ourselves. There are still technologies that are available to us that can help us thwart censorship. Uh, but what we need to do now is safeguard the protections that we have now uh, so that future generations of internet users will understand what it's like to have a free and open internet. I want to make sure that the internet 30 or 60 or 100 years from now is just as free and open as it is today. If you have network neutrality on the internet, but if more and more people use managed services like, like TV or Google, it means everything's going to be controlled by Google or, or another intermediary, another company. If, if the spirit of the internet, if the nature of the internet is changing, we're going to suffer from it. And the free software uh, developers are going to suffer from it because they're, going, they're not going to be able to compete with uh, you know, companies uh, which are um, providing closed networks and, and you know, closed content, walled garden services and devices. This is not compatible with the software because typically the user is not in control. So we had thought that through uh, the Talentum program, which is again giving young people the chance to apply for internships, apprenticeships, jobs, uh, that we would get about 1%. Halfway through Campus Party, we're in excess of 10%, and we may have 20% uh, by the end of the event. We will give some people jobs in Telefonica or through Wira here this week. We'll actually interview them uh, and, and kind of give them some roles. So the, the interest is great because look, there's still an unemployment problem in Europe, crisis called, if you will, uh, and yet you would never feel it being here. You would never feel a sense of pessimism. Uh, and this idea that through a crisis is the time when you double down and invest more, make bets on the things that really matter that will pull you through, 
Uh, that's at the heart of everything that we're doing and what we see here in, in all the innovations and all the ideas that are churning through. I haven't met a pessimistic person or seen a pessimistic face. Everything is about optimism and ideas. It's time for us to be heard, to change things. We all are part of the problem and we all are part of the solution. The first thing we need is to get together, here we are, and now the next thing is to be heard. Finally, we have the patronage of the European Commission for this event, and they are going to hear us, they are going to share our ideas, they are going to take the best ideas we have to try to change European laws. So that's a first step, but it can be the last one.